Mika Leonard Winswiani. Mila Miamia. What did I just say? I introduced myself in my tribal language, the Miamia language. Mila Miamia means I am Miamia. Miamia is the Miami tribe of Oklahoma, known as the downstream people, a federally recognized tribe located in what we now call Oklahoma. The Miamia people originally inhabited lands in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, and through multiple forced removals by the U.S. government, wound up in Kansas and eventually to Oklahoma. Our first tribal constitution was adopted in 1939, and since then, we've continued to fight for our sovereignty, our right to self-determination, and done everything we can to keep our people and culture alive. I'm happy to say now we're 7,000 plus members strong with a vibrant culture, a world-renowned language revitalization program, and a thriving economic arm, a diverse portfolio of businesses that I am proud to be an employee of. I suppose you could say I'm a modern Native American, which leads me to the question, what exactly is a modern Native American? What does that look like? And I'm reminded of a story, something that happened to me in eighth grade. It was the first day of school, social studies class, and our teacher is telling us a bit about what we'll be covering this year. Notably, we'll be covering Native American history. It's a very broad term, but I'm excited because, hey, I'm Native American. Um, I've always liked school, I've loved learning, and I was an extroverted student. I was so excited at the prospect of being able to share my heritage with my classmates. And then the teacher says this, I can tell by looking at you that no one in this room is Native American. Once again, the teacher said, I can tell by looking at you that no one in this room is Native American. Now, I don't remember exactly what I felt in that moment or if I would have had the courage or wherewithal to challenge what the teacher was saying. Luckily, in this instance, I didn't have to. A friend raised her hand and said, Mika Leonard's grandfather is the chief of the Miami tribe, which in fact was absolutely true. He proudly served our tribe as an elected leader until his very, very last breath. Now, looking back, I get a good laugh out of that story. It's funny, it's funny to me that a teacher would ever say such a thing. I'd like to think that wouldn't happen in today's classroom or in the workplace, but who knows? But the real reason I think that stayed with me for all these years is that it was the first memory I have of understanding my own Indianness and that that was not something that everybody else could just see by looking at me. It also made me realize that different people have different beliefs and also different expectations of what they believe an Indian person should look like. I wonder, had I been wearing braids that day or long beaded earrings, or maybe if I had just come to school in a full uh, uh, feather headdress, maybe this teacher wouldn't have made such a bold assertion. I also think this moment in middle school propelled me to wind up to where I am now, working in and for Indian country. I felt then, and I continue to feel, that it is critical that I be a good steward for and of tribes. Now, because of my professional life, my tribal heritage and my tribal membership comes up a lot in conversation. And there's a lot of comments and questions that I'm fairly accustomed to getting. And I'm gonna share a few of those with you. One I get a lot is, well, you don't look Native American. And I'm never really sure how to respond to that because again, that gets back to, well, what does a Native American person look like? Sometimes I also will get, oh, I absolutely see it. You've got high cheekbones, um, which I guess, thank you. Um, but it's not just about physical attributes. I get a lot of questions about sports teams and mascots does it offend you? Or, you know, we see this as us honoring the tribes. And to that, I always wanna say, your intentions may be good, but if an individual tribe 
or a large conglomerate of tribes have been asking you to change your mascot for quite some time, then maybe it's time to just change it. People also say things like, do you get a lot of that casino money? No, in fact, I don't. And it's actually quite a misnomer that tribes are super wealthy from gaming. It's really just a small sliver of Indian country that have made it big in that arena. And of course, there's my personal favorite is when people tell me that my great grandmother was a Cherokee princess. And I, again, I'm not really sure how to respond to that one. I usually just kind of give them a quizzical look. But what all of this has taught me is that these pervasive stereotypes and in certain instances, outright racism absolutely exist today. It's also taught me that it's not my job to look or act or be a certain way because it conforms to whatever it is that's going to make you feel comfortable about my heritage, my ethnicity, and my sense of Miamia. Because I'm actually so much more than just a Miamia citizen. I'm American, I'm actually half Japanese, I'm a mother, a wife, a friend, and I'm still learning. Because this stuff isn't easy, and I've spent much of my life struggling to figure out exactly what my identity is. My identity is not something that can be easily put in a box. And also my identity is not your stereotype. It will always be important for me to share who I am and to tell my story so that someone else doesn't tell it for me. Nay way. Thank you. Mm -hmm.